like one of those places that just you just feel. This place is truly special. It is so magical. You literally feel like you're in a fairy tale. Hey everyone, we're Dana and Mike. We've been living life on the road with our three dogs searching for our adventure. We are currently on the road headed up north with our end goal to see the Arctic Ocean. Join us every Sunday for new videos as we show you amazing campsites and the stunning natural beauty of North America. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Just Go Travel. We are here in Chetwind, BC at this beautiful camp spot. So today marks the official first day of our journey heading up to the Arctic Ocean. The great end to our huge massive journey that we've been on for the past year. If you guys are new to this channel, we have been living in that RV behind us for almost a year now, traveling all across Canada, US and Mexico. We worked our way back to the west coast of BC, coming full circle on this great journey. And this is the end game of what we've been planning for this whole trip. It's gonna be the most remote wilderness that we've ever seen in our whole lives. Just going up to the very sparsely populated, the Northwest Territories and Yukon, as well as Alaska and the States. Now that we are heading up north, there is a ton, a ton of hours <laughs> that we need to sit in that vehicle to get up north. <laughs> I think we were talking about how it's almost equivalent to the same amount of driving that we had to do to go south to Baja, but now it's going north and it's all just in Canada, yeah. like Canada's <laughs> humongous. So basically we have days upon days to drive and we wanted to split that up. So we're stopping back here to check off a few more little activities here and yeah just break up the drive on our way to the northwest territories good morning everyone it's a new day here in chetwind we were gonna do two days here but yeah. the smoke has gotten a little bit worse overnight yesterday afternoon we were just hanging on the trailer and then all of a sudden like insane wind yeah like crazy wind started happening and then all of a sudden everything was just covered in smoke in like, like seconds yeah. like it was crazy <laughs> but we're gonna pack up today and we're gonna go up north yeah. we're gonna keep going we're gonna go to our first territory even though we can technically have gone into the yukon but we've like barely like so i don't even consider that like we've yeah. been there so <laughs> hopefully we make it all the way up there today and the smoke is a little less prominent there yeah. <laughs> Well, we are on the road heading out of this smoky area. We have a nine hour drive and we are headed towards Enterprise Northwest Territories because this is kind of where all these waterfalls are that I want to see. Yeah, join us as we make our way further north. Quick supply run stop. Well, this is probably the worst smoke we've seen so far. This is pretty bad. One good thing about being in this part of Alberta is the gas is actually quite a bit cheaper than what we're used to. So that's a nice plus. We think it's because they, the oil fields or oil sands or something, something. are up here. Something, closer to where yeah. they get gas. Yeah. <laughs> Also, you guys might notice that the smoke is kind of clearing, especially where we are now heading up north. There's a lot less smoke in the distance and you can breathe normally again. <laughs> Alright, we figured since we're saving some money on gas, we would treat ourselves to some burgers. <laughs> I haven't had fast food in a while, so why not? We just passed a grizzly. Holy sh**. Grizzly bear. Alright, we're getting close. We got about two hours left. We're actually not gonna make it into Northwest Territories today just because it's starting to get late. Even though the yeah. sun is apparently going down at 10 p.m. today. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the further north you go, the later the sun sets, so. All right, 
Welcome everybody to this random rest stop. <laughs> it's been a hell of a long day. We drove a lot today. We drove for like a solid eight hours, so we're exhausted. But for now, we're just gonna call it, eat some food, get some rest, and we'll catch you guys in the morning. All right, you guys, good morning. So it's the next day and we're back on the road. Today, we are finally gonna cross into Northwest Territories. Really exciting entering this part of Canada that we've never been to. Join us for that and it's gonna be a good day. So we have made it to the Northwest Territory sign. This marks our crossing into what is sort of like the last territory and province for us in Canada. We have now set foot in every single province and every territory, I guess except for Nunavut, which was a new territory that was created a few years back. You can't drive to it, you can only fly to it. But yeah, so we're not gonna count that one, but it's a great feeling. This is amazing. It's a beautiful day, and thanks for being with us. <laughs> Puppies. Are you in the Northwest Territory? <laughs> You're the furthest north you've ever been. <laughs> you have no idea. You're like, where's our food? <laughs> The Northwest Territories is an area of land located in northern Canada, spanning the size of 1.3 million square kilometers. For comparison, that's almost twice the size of Texas. It's one of three territories in Canada, all located in the north, and they exist alongside the 10 provinces of Canada. The main differences between a territory and a province is that, in general, a territory's government is controlled primarily by the federal government of Canada, while a province's local government have more power to decide their own rules. All of the territories in Canada also have a significantly lower population than the rest of the provinces, with Northwest Territories being home to only about 45,000 people. The Northwest Territories is home to vast stretches of wilderness and Arctic tundra, as well as a phenomenon called the Midnight Sun. Starting in May of each year and lasting until August, the territory has extremely long-lasting daylight with upwards of 20 hours of daylight per day during peak times. Conversely, during the winter time, the sun may not come up at all, creating a perpetual darkness that lingers for weeks. This is due to the fact that Northwest Territories lies north of the 60th parallel, a circle of latitude located 60 degrees north of the equator. All right, we are about five minutes away from our first potential camp spot. There's only about two, maybe three, in the area that I'm hoping to stay in. So we're gonna check out the first one, see how it goes. made it to our camp spot. It looks nice this way. <laughs> Just don't look the other way. Yeah, that, that way is the highway and the road. <laughs> but yeah, we're here in this big like gravel pit kind of thing. We are gonna go right back out today and start exploring because we've just been kind of cooped up for the last couple of days here so we want to get out there and start doing stuff yeah and we've tried to avoid some of the smoke that's apparently headed our way right right because the smoke that we left yesterday is apparently being blown up north now so hopefully it doesn't get all the way here but i don't know who knows what's gonna happen we'll see yeah. now you might be saying well guys you got the door facing the wrong way no but in reality we sometimes like having this side of the trailer face the view just because those are our biggest windows and you get the nicest view out of that side. See, look, Kenzie's there. Kenzie! <laughs> and there is somewhere you could go like way deep on the other side of this lake, but it goes through a really overgrown path. And just this being our first campsite here in the Northwest Territories, we're out in the remote wilderness. It's really far from everything. So we really just don't want to risk it unless we really know we can make it. And for now, this is a pretty good campsite. Our first one in Northwest Territories, awesome. <sighs> All right, before we head out, we gotta eat some lunch. But we've been really getting into charcuterie lately. <laughs> I don't know what's with us. We, get it, we start to like something, we're like, let's have it every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're just packing up all our stuff to go. And uh, obviously we've never been here before and leaving the trailer in some random 
free parking area that you found online is a bit of a risk. It's just kind of the risk that we take everywhere we go whenever we find free campsites. Yeah, some people have asked us in the past how we stay safe and what we do for security while on the road. And we do have a few things on the trailer. For instance, we always have this beefy hitch lock that we put on here. And like our solar panel is attached with a cable lock. We have a real link camera that's hooked up to Wi-Fi with our Starlink and that will send us a message on our phone if there's ever movement or anything like that here. So, I mean like this is our house, right? So everything we own is in this thing and it'd be a real shame if we came back one day and it was broken into or someone actually hooked up and drove off with it or something crazy like that. So, But so far we've always been okay. Whew. Okay, so the plan right now is just go check out a couple of waterfalls that are nearby. Quick, easy, I think it's either two kilometers or a four kilometer hike. <laughs> we're not too sure. So we're gonna go do that. And then I think afterwards we're gonna go check out the nearby town, the area called Hay River. Yeah. And like see what uh, well, pocket of civilization <laughs> looks like out here in the middle of nowhere. Cause it truly does feel like the middle of nowhere where we are now. When you're driving along the roads, there's like no houses, no cities, no towns for long periods of time and you just see forest service roads basically are the only other roads besides the highway that you're on so it's it's pretty remote for sure <laughs> Also, another thing that we have for safety and security is our little Zolio device. So this is basically a satellite communicator that attaches to an app on your phone and then you can text people or call for emergency services if you are in a life or death situation. Very, very useful, especially out here in the middle of nowhere in the wilderness. So we are at the Twin Gorge Territorial Park and this first waterfall is called Alexandra Falls and the second waterfall along this trail is called Louise Falls but we're coming up to the waterfall right now that was like two seconds <laughs> <laughs> so yes yeah, this is Alexandra Falls Okay, so there is a little trail very close to the main viewing area that takes you literally right to the edge of the river here. And you get to stand right at the top of the waterfall and get a really cool picture. start to our Northwest Territories adventures. <laughs> like, that's awesome. Every time we see waterfalls, they never get old. I don't know why. There's just something special about them. And they're all uniquely different in their own way. All right, here we go. Here's the viewpoint. There's also a spiral staircase that leads down. So we're, let's check that out. One, two, three, four and a half ish <laughs> rounds. That's kind of cute. Oh, cool. And like it's like a really weird shape. Yeah. Yeah, that's sweet. <laughs> that's different. I like it. Waterfalls. Probably over a hundred. It's probably really close to a hundred, yeah. Obviously because we've seen so many, you know, we've seen some pretty extravagant ones. With this one here at Northwest Territories, I honestly was not expecting anything super spectacular, but they definitely do surprise you sometimes. And honestly, this last one, I had zero idea that it had this like 
super cool cutout. Very, very cool. Definitely go see any waterfall that is provided to you because, <laughs> because none of them disappoint. I've never been disappointed or sad or whatever about going to a waterfall. <laughs> Okay, well, um, change of plans. So we can't go to Hay River because the road to it is closed because there's a wildfire nearby that they're fighting. So the entire town of Hay River has been evacuated since a couple days ago. So pretty crazy. We just didn't even know that. Yeah, we just happened to be here at this time. We had no idea. Hopefully the residents of Hay River are doing okay. And hopefully they get this wildfire put out. It's a crappy situation. And what can you do, right? Mother nature. But anyway, we're just gonna head back home Hang out at the trailer. Mostly successful first day here in Northwest Territories. All right, getting back to the trailer and she's still there. <laughs> <laughs> Always starving for water, but I swear we, we, we give, give them, them water. water. We give them lots of water. <laughs> All right, you guys, so we're back home, back in the trailer. We're pretty tired, so I think we're gonna call it for today. It's been a busy couple of days for sure. Just with yesterday driving eight hours to get all the way here and then today driving some more and then getting out there immediately and going to some waterfalls and stuff. So we're pretty tired, but yeah, we'll say good night and we'll catch you guys soon. We are headed further north. You ready? Yeah! During our long drive to the next destination, we stopped off at a couple waterfalls called McNally Falls and Lady Evelyn Falls. The second waterfall was especially fun because you could kind of walk behind a section of it. While on the road, we were also able to check out some local wildlife along the way before making it to our second campsite. All right, time to scout. Okay, I can see the lake, so I can see the end. Now we just gotta make sure that we can turn around here. It's not a bad spot, definitely only room for one and definitely no turnaround for our side of trailer. It's probably okay. We're only here for like two nights, so. All right, so we are basically set up in this spot and it's a little bit unfortunate. It's kind of dirty, like it's a great spot, you know, right by the water, beautiful views of the forest, but I don't know, people have kind of disrespected it a bit and that's kind of unfortunate. So, I don't know, maybe I'll pick up my, put on some gloves later and do some cleanup because this could be a really nice spot if people just, you know, respected it a little bit better. Time for cookies. <laughs> Mike's been begging for cookies for the yeah. last, like, week, so. <laughs> I feel like it's time. <laughs> as we yeah. continue like, heading like, north. It's, it's light out. Okay, well, it's turn light. the lights off. Yeah. Like, it's, it's still it's, so bright in here. Yeah. <laughs> Even when we close the curtain that we have here, we should have invested in like a, a blackout a thing, black for, out thing yeah. for this, but you know, we didn't. So we're trying to come up with our own way of blocking it with hopefully some duct tape and a yoga mat. <laughs> uh huh. And then just, you know, We will close the door. No, 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 from the, oh shit, okay. <laughs> It'll probably still work. Okay. <laughs> wow! <laughs> okay, now turn the lights on. 
darkness. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> adventure is something that I did not have on my itinerary to begin with. I was doing a bit of research, just trying to find out more about the area, you know, maybe I missed some stuff. And it looks like there is a brand new highway called Highway 9 that leaves up to Wati. That's a small little town that used to, you know, not have much access. The town was previously inaccessible by road. You used to have to fly there. So this highway is still fairly new and there is a waterfall along this highway that is apparently something that the Northwest Territories government is trying to make kind of like a tourist attraction and kind of gain people to go up towards Wati. So yeah, this is called the Wati Waterfall, I believe is what they're calling it. Yeah, I haven't found a ton of information online about it other than where it is and all the kind of plans that they're planning on doing for the area. They want to create a campground, they want to create day use and like a viewing platform for this beautiful waterfall. So yeah, the roads are all open. We technically can access it. It's just maybe not fully finished. It is a bit of a journey, mainly because I don't think there's much camping along the main highway there. So it's about an hour and a half drive for us. Hopefully it'll be a little bit less for you if you kind of show up once there's a campground there. That would be lucky for you. But we have to do the big big drive. So join us as we adventure to Northwest Territory's newest hidden gem. All right, here we go. Gravel time. For 90 kilometers, it says. <laughs> Okay, so, so far this road, yeah, it's all gravel, but it's actually really flat and there's not a lot of like ruts or potholes or anything like that. So you can mostly treat it like a normal road. Normally on like, you know, gravel or dirt roads, like you're going pretty slow, right? So. Okay, we have officially turned off the main highway and we are about four or five kilometers away from the waterfall. And yeah, let's cross our fingers. It's as beautiful as it looks on the photos. It's a dirt road now, and it's a lot more bumpy than the main highway, so we gotta, gotta go slow here. <laughs> All right, everybody, we have made it to Wati Falls. Gorgeous. Oh, holy cow, look at this. There's still snow even. It's so pretty. <laughs> Yeah, that's I something. I would never, this is like beyond beautiful. Yeah. Like, <laughs> not at all what I would have expected in Northwest Territories. No, this is one of the most epic waterfalls ever, probably, that we've ever 100%. seen. 100%. Yeah. Cascading on. Yeah, it's got like, it's cascading small little waterfalls there, and then two giant ones here. Fantastic! <laughs> yeah, definitely worth the oh drive. <laughs> wow, look at that. That's something amazing. <laughs> I'm like stunned. <laughs> super thankful for everything that we have been able to experience and for this to be like such a hidden gem right now I don't know it's just it's really magical yeah. with the added journey of how long it took to get here like Northwest Territories is far for most people but this is amazing like like how do you how do you beat something like this as I say if this is the only thing you have on your bucket list for Northwest Territories honestly it is yeah. worth this yeah, one it's spot just just it's worth it just for this yeah <laughs> it's so good
All right, you guys, good morning. It's a brand new day. It's actually a very busy day for us because this is our last day in the Northwest Territories until we go up on the Dempster Highway. For those of you that have been kind of following along, you know that's kind of our end goal. So yeah, we're packing up. We are hitting the road. We are going to Yellowknife today and we're gonna run some errands. We're gonna see a few attractions. Yeah, we'll take you along. It's gonna be a busy day. It's all dirty. Yeah, everything's dirty. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all ready to go. Goodbye, Lake. Goodbye, Lake. <laughs> this was a nice spot once yeah. I cleaned it up. Yeah. <laughs> so today's errands are laundry and Walmart. We're doing these before, like in the morning, because we have a campground booked for later today. We can't check in till like two. <clears throat> so we're gonna try and get all these errands done beforehand. All right, so in a couple days here, we're gonna be leaving Northwest Territories to move on to our next destination. And we recently learned that there's a stretch on Highway 1 to Highway 7 leaving Northwest Territories that is about 480 kilometers that there is no gas station at all. When we're towing, we have a max of maybe, really, it really depends on like how many hills you go through, how much wind there is, but really anywhere from 350 to 450 of range on one tank of gas. So there's almost no scenario where we would make 480 kilometers on one tank of gas. So one of the tasks at Walmart besides getting groceries and stuff like that is we have to get an extra gas can. We already have an extra gas can. Oh, we're gonna get another gas can, so we have two of them, so we never have to worry about these long stretches where there's no gas station. When you're out here in the middle of nowhere, and like really in the middle of nowhere, help is really far away. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> scary. Yeah. So you have to be prepared in that sense, you have to think ahead. Yellowknife is actually the largest city here in all of Northwest Territories. And even then, it's not that huge in comparison to other cities. There's only about 20,000 people that live at Yellowknife, period. The city of Yellowknife is the capital of the Northwest Territories. Sitting on the shores of the Great Slave Lake, which is the deepest lake in all of North America, this beautiful city provides a break from the endless remote wilderness of the North. Known as the diamond capital of North America, there are several in-operation diamond mines in the Yellowknife area, and it is the main industry that contributes to the economy here. We went to a lookout at an area called The Rock, which is a testament to the rugged terrain the people dealt with while building their homes. The lack of buildable flat land in Yellowknife's old town meant that the residents had to think of inventive ways to build their homes on the rocks. It was beautiful to look out onto the Great Slave Lake before we made our way to the campsite. All right, you guys, so we have made it here to our campsite at Prelude Lake. This is our last campsite for Northwest Territories, at least for right now. Mm -hmm. yep. We came here, set up the trailer, and then we quickly went back out and went and saw our last waterfall in this area, which was called Cameron Falls. And that kind of concludes our tour of all the waterfalls in this area that you can drive to. There's there's others that you can like, you know, backcountry well, camp to or fly <laughs> to. But yeah, guys, I think we are going to call it for this episode. Tomorrow, we are leaving Northwest Territories. It's not the end of our time here. In a couple of months, we will be back to go to the very, very top, the Arctic Ocean. And so keep a lookout for that. The time that we spent here over the last week or so was just sort of a taste of what Northwest Territories is like. And just the North in general, like yeah. super deserted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it really felt remote while we were out here for sure. And it's going to continue to feel remote as we kind of head back into BC and slowly make our way over to Alaska starting tomorrow. We're going to do that 480 kilometer stretch of road that we told you about where there's going to be no gas stations. So we're mentally prepping ourselves for that and making sure we have all the right supplies and really, really hoping that we make it all the way over there without running out of gas, yes. right? Pray for <laughs> no wind, yeah. pray for no hills. Yeah. <laughs> So tune in next week to see if we make it through that crazy road. And yeah, hopefully more adventures and smooth sailing to come. Should be good, guys. <laughs> but anyway, thanks so much again for watching. My name is Mike. I'm Dana. We're Let's Just Go Travel, and we'll see you guys on the next adventure. What, what?